Hey, beautiful souls, beautiful sunshine here with the R Holistic Killer, AKA Sonya B. I am back with another prophetic message. Bear with me because I actually have so many messages that um, some messages came in the last few days. I didn't have time to do it. Um, I was dealing with some personal stuff myself. So anyway, but I'm just now getting you these messages. And I just want to say for those of you who are new to my channel, I just want to say welcome. And for those of you who are returning back, I want to say welcome back. Keep in mind that these energies could be happening right now to some of you. Um, if, if it's not happening right now, it could be happening tomorrow three days from now, a week from now, a month from now. Just take it how it resonates. Uh, it just depends on your location on the planet, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, all that plays a factor. And also keep in mind that if the message doesn't resonate with you at this exact moment, does not necessarily mean that it may not resonate, resonate with you in the near future. So keep that in mind as well too. The energy just may not have reached you yet. But if you are clicking on the video, obviously there's a reason that you're clicking on it. Either you may be experiencing this or someone that is around you may be experiencing it. So keep that in mind as well too to better help you to understand what could possibly be taking place with yourself or with them as well. And for those of you who do not know, I'm an intuitive, clairvoyant, Hayoka empath who receives divine prophetic dream messages. And I also receive um, intuitive messages through music as well, too. And I am also here to help translate messages from the spiritual world into this 3D world to help us as souls on their journeys to let you know the energies that are to come. So that way that when you are presented with the energy, you kind of has a you kind of have a heads up of which choice that you're willing to make, you know, whether you're willing to go left or where you're or you're willing, excuse me, to go right. So again, I am just here basically to let you know the energies that are at hand, to let you know what you're dealing with, to let you know what's to come. And it's just a matter of preparing you for what's to come for you to make that exact decision. I'm not here to make the decision for you. I'm just here to deliver the message and help you translate the energy that is taking place at this point in time. Anyway, so just again, as I said before, just keep in mind if the energy is not happening right now, does not mean that it, it could be happening a few days from now, it could be happening a week from now, or it could be happening a month from now, or even, even, I'm hearing spirits say even 60 days from now. So just keep that in mind as well, too. It's the energies that is to come. So um, anyway, so with all that being said, let's get right into the messages. And when I'm done, I'm going to pull, I was, uh, Spirit gave me two decks of cards to pull from. So I'm going to pull messages from there to the very end. And some of these messages may not resonate with you, but I'll try to be as quick as possible because there's so many messages. And I just want to say, basically, if you try listening to the end, you know, um, because one of one or maybe a few of these messages could be related to you. Anyway, so let's get into the message. Okay, so this one is going back. Okay, so this one's going back to the 14th. Um, I received this message and it came in a form as if, I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to be as quick as possible because there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 actually 15 so there's 15 different messages <laughs> and um i just wrote them down so i just i'm i'm just now getting them to you guys so uh that's what happens when i get a little backed up and i don't deliver these messages as soon as i receive them uh, i get a little backed up so now i'm just giving it to you in case more messages come through i don't want to be playing catch up so i'm giving it to you now anyway so the first message i receive is be mindful and pay attention to the things that people say and do like you may notice that their actions are not lining up with their words should i say so in other words like somebody may say something like uh well somebody could say something or respond to you in a playful type of way but they're okay let me explain to you real quick so it came to me in a sense of okay i was asking somebody to do something for me in a dream right and they were like no i'm not doing that but then they turned right around and said you know i'm gonna take you so it was almost like they were kind of giving you a hard time in a sense so you're meant to be aware of that type of energy and you know because obviously in the spirits bring it to my attention that if someone says no that's what they're really meaning if that's their first response but they're doing something 
that they don't necessarily want to do it, but they feel an obligated to, they feel like they feel an obligated to do it because that's the old mindset and the old way of doing things rather than just saying, no, I can't do it or, you know, I'm busy or I have something to do. So just be mindful of that energy as well too, you know, because you were just, you were meant to um, just pay it. The, the thing is you're meant to just pay attention to people's actions and see if their actions are lining up with their words. And then, so the next message I receive. Oh, shoot. Where'd it go? Okay. So the next message I received was. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Spirit was just letting me know in regards to that first message. It's a matter of. being authentic. If you don't want to do something, you don't have to do something. You know, now there are certain things that we are obligated to do because the universe is trying to mature us and allow us to be become spiritually mature, whether it's, you know, a mother learning how to be spiritually mature in regards to mothering her children or whether it's like this is just an example or whether it's a father learning how to be spiritually mature in order to deal with their children. You know, and even if it's like an example, Spirit is showing me like the teacher, you know, teaching teachers how to be spiritually mature when they're dealing with children, knowing that these kids are sensitive and knowing that they want was a kid themselves as well. So just understanding, you know, just just being understanding in a sense, like knowing your limitations and what I'm hearing Spirit say and creating boundaries at the same time, in other words but not allowing other people to overstep your boundaries is what i'm hearing spirit say as well too so the next message that i received was this one was kind of weird so don't trip but this is just the energy that's coming through in other words some people are going to receive some activation some updates some upgrades and so on and so on so this dream came through as if it was like i was like i felt like i was in a high-rise building right but i was at my like old teacher's one of my middle school teacher, who's my favorite teacher, I was like at her apartment. I felt like I was at her apartment and she wasn't home, but I was there. And next thing you know, I saw like this helicopter come, like she had these big ass windows, right? You know, the windows that's kind of like from the floor near to like the ceiling, like those type of windows in the high rise building. You know, those new buildings that they're building nowadays. So it came in a form if, as if it was that type of building. And um, what happened was, I noticed a helicopter had came flying by the window and it had it its its front headlights on you know how the helicopter has a front light on the front and it's bright and shiny so they can see you know wherever it is that they're you know navigating to so for some particular reason a helicopter showed up right in front of the window it just had appeared there it showed actually it kind of flew there and when i noticed it it was there and like it was hovering in front of the window flashing its light so I say all that to say, and then right after that, right, I end up seeing like a spaceship, right? <laughs> so I know it sounds kind of crazy, but just bear with me. I saw a spaceship that was like, you know, twirling around or whatever. And I saw it for a quick second. And all of a sudden it just kind of went without a, it went without a view or whatever. But I say all that to say that, um, the helicopter and the spaceship to me is a representation of higher information, higher wisdom, higher knowledge, higher, uh, higher perception is what I'm hearing. So I say all that to say that, um, so I say all that to say that the spaceship was a representation of bringing information and bringing downloads to people you know, like some sort of, I got the feeling like, you know, if you think about UFOs, you know, they refer to UFOs as like higher intelligence, you know? So I say all that to say, you know, when people advance, advance technology, advance system, advance knowing, you know, just, just that higher consciousness, should I say? So when just seeing that spaceship in the helicopter and it was just letting me know that some sort of activations are coming through here in regards to people, you know, um, for it's upgrading them in a sense to it's, it's, it's upgrading. Let me just say that it's, it's a upgrade. Should I say from where we're at right now 
in whatever energies that we in it's just imagine an upgrade from that level that you're on right now and being upgraded to another level so let me leave that there but anyway so i'm just letting you guys know that so if you see a sense of change within yourself and you notice that things are a little seeming a little different like either you're feeling more happy or you're feeling more liberated just know that's part of the activation and things taking place and and what I'm also hearing spirits say, like that heart, the heart chakra, because I know we've been talking about this before, like that heart is opening up. And I mentioned before that the hearts were melting in a sense. It's like slowly but surely it's doing it. So imagine if a heart has been on ice for years and it's almost like you got to slowly melt the ice away from it and not do it too fast because if you do it too fast it's almost like shocking the system is what i'm hearing spirits say so that's the reason why it seemed like slowly but surely like these walls for those people who have been you know more rigid and trying to control things and you know just being you know just in resistance should i say it's almost like those walls are like slowly crumbling down should i say anyway but it's doing it in a manner so that way you can adjust to the new you, in other words. Anyway, so the next dream that I received was, this one came through as if like I was, it came through like this, but I know I was just sensing this from somebody else's uh, perspective or whatever. So it, it was like as if myself and, but it came through like it was my sister in a sense. So I was saying all that to say that, okay erase that let me just say it like this it came this message is for because it came through like as if it was a couple even though my sister was there i was there but it was like her and i was a couple but i know i was just seeing it probably through you know like her husband's eyes as an example you know for some of you guys or whatever so in other words this is dealing with like people within relationships you know and I say all that to say some of you guys are probably feeling like your relationships are being a little tested right now. And they are, you know, because you were meant to see and look at things from a different and a higher perspective in regards to the <clears throat> uh, situation that you're possibly dealing with. You know, allow you to see how you limit yourself, how you have, um, you know, how you're just settling, settling for relationships just because the sake of saying I'm in a relationship. You know, whereas most people right now, there are a lot of people right now who aren't in relationships. And sometimes that scares people because it allows them and forces them to have to, you know, sit within themselves when they're not in a relationship. And they're alone in solitude is what I'm hearing spirit say. Thank you, spirit. They're alone and, and in solitude. So therefore, when you're alone in solitude, you're able to see so much more. You're able to hear so much more. And sometimes people don't want to hear or see the real reality of things that are going on deep within should i say so i say all that to say that this was a representation of it was like someone was in the room they were like a couple was in the room and then one couple got up and went to go to the sink to wash dishes and the sink is a representation of you think of washing away things that you don't need or you know grinding it up in a garbage disposal you know any dirt you know uh stuff that you don't want and getting rid of so it was like dirty dishes were sitting in the sink for some particular reason like they were in their room and they were in their room one person got up and went into and went in the kitchen to go wash the dishes because they knew the dishes were sitting in the sink like for me, that was a representation of something not feeling, not feeling at ease about something, like something's bothering somebody in, in regards to just leaving the dishes sitting there. Like there's something that's in, thank you, Spirit. I'm hearing Spirit say like there's an underlying issue that's, that's kind of nagging at at you so the, the dishes sitting in the sink was a representation of irritation because something dirty was just sitting there and it hadn't been clean and it's just sitting there kind of taking up space or whatever the case may be so anyway they got up went to go wash the dishes but they only washed the dishes that they had so in other words that was a representation of looking at themselves in a light of there's something that they need to address and then they left the other dishes there in the sink because they were basically asking their spouse, are you going to wash your dishes, in other words? So in other words, it was like they were focusing on themselves, but they was also focusing on their spouse at the same time, too. And, and 
and these energies we're meant to focus on ourself in other words like if your spouse is doing something that you don't like of course yeah you know you should be addressing that and having a conversation about that or whatever the case may be especially if you're in a relationship you're staying in the same household or whatever the case may be having a conversation about that addressing any issues and seeing what conclusions that you can come up with well the universe is also having you to sit in solitude at the same time meaning like even though two people are in the same household together they're meant to take that time apart even if they're in the same household together and really go deep within and to really look underneath the surface of why am i experiencing this right now why is this coming up why are these feelings coming up especially if those feelings haven't been there before it's because the universe is trying to get your attention and trying to get you to see some things that has been hidden underneath the surface for some time that needs to be addressing and i, I know some people don't want to hear that because it takes them out of their comfort zone but um yeah it's almost like God is almost kind of like revamping relationships. And I say all that to say because he wants people to be in relationships and he wants it to be in a place. He wants the relationships to be authentic, meaning like you allow the other person to be themselves without you trying to control them, without you trying to manipulate them, without you trying to do the same tactics that maybe, you know, we all have done at some point in time, you know, over the years. But coming into this new energy and this new paradigm shift that we're shifting into like we can't take those energies with us so a lot of those relationships aren't going to work doing this shift in a sense so you know whether some of them are falling apart right now or whether some of them possibly falling apart in the you know near future you know it's coming from a perspective of again god is just trying to get you to see things from a he wants you to go within and to really address any underlying issues, insecurities. Thank you, Spirit, is what I'm hearing. And any insecurities that you may have of why you're responding this way. Why do you feel like you need to be or settle for a particular relationship, especially if it's not really serving you in a sense? So keep that in mind, too. I didn't mean to make that a long topic. But anywho, so the next message that I received was, oh, this one. So I guess God is, God gave me this message and I didn't even see this one. I just heard him basically saying he had basic got uh, bear with me. I'm sorry. Cause when I heard that, I was like, okay, let me just make sure I don't cross my T's and dot my I's before the new year. And I think that's happening be because we're coming up on, um, the day before Christmas or whatever, or yeah, the day before Christmas. Anyway. So with that being said, God had basically said for those people who have, uh, Oh, God said, excuse me, God said to send those people love who, who are, I wrote down who are in relationships, but I also, who are also in relationships where people are, are being lied to in other words. So in other words, but it's not only that as well too, because I also heard spirit saying to me too, that, you know, also pray for those people, you know, who have, um, who basically have done you wrong as well too so in any shape or form if someone has done you wrong you know basically saying a prayer for them and it's almost like letting go and letting god deal with the situation because i told you guys some time ago that god had basically said that if you take your hand i did a message on this if you take your hand off the situation he was like i can't even remember what i said in the message something about if you and I can't give you the exact title of the message because I think that might have been a message where there might have been four prophetic messages in one video. But I say all that to say the message was um, something of the nature. If you take your hand off the situation, God is going to take care of it. So he's just waiting. Oh, thank you, Spirit. It was like God said, if you just relax, he's going to take care of the situation, especially for those people who have, um, you know, if someone has done you wrong in some sort of way you know, basically pray, pray, pray for it. And here's the thing, because when I'm hearing spirits say, you can forgive a person and let it go. It doesn't mean that you have to forget. You should always remember. So that way, if that energy presents itself, whether it's through someone else, you know, not, you know, what energies you don't want to revisit again. So again, there's, there's a difference between, you know, forgiving somebody for the things that they have done and letting it go. And to remember, when we forgive people, the forgiveness is for ourselves, not so much for the other person. Um, because when you've made peace about things, then, 
you can sleep at night for those people who haven't made peace about things sometimes they have a hard time sleeping or sometimes they fall into the sense of a little depression or sometimes they fall into um you know uh worrying and and not really sure why because they haven't made peace and what i'm hearing spirit say they haven't made peace with their past in a sense so it's almost like people are being divinely guided to make peace with their past in whatever shape or form that it may come in so that way because when you don't make peace with your past and you try to move forward it keeps you from moving forward and it keeps you stuck in the past because you haven't made peace with it so it's almost like you have to make peace with your past in order to be able to shift you know forward and um and be able to move on in a sense because it gives you i'm, I'm just seeing someone being liberated excuse me i'm seeing someone being liberated once they do that in a sense and um i did do a message where i saw that some people were going to be feeling free feeling liberated and it's almost like because in the dream it was like i was dancing naked because i was just felt so free and happy and you know being a representation of someone in a dream naked means liberation so that was just letting me know that that energy is coming if you so choose to take advantage of it you know or you know people can choose to hold on to the past and stay stuck in that same energy and so on and so on but anyway let's move on so the next message that i saw was okay this one was this one has a, like a like a little toss twists and turns with it so if you find yourself dealing with a situation like this um I'll say more power to you because I remember there was a point in time that I had to kind of experience this situation, should I say. And it wasn't in an unhealthy type of way, but this was in a way of trying to get a particular person from, let's just say, let's, let's just say this. Like, you know how sometimes people can be in the system through the foster care system or, you know, uh, however you want to take it, you know, ward of the state, however they want to take it, you know. Uh, I mean, however you want to refer to it as. Well, sometimes people or sometimes kids can end up in the wrong hands, should I say. And sometimes it's so important to listen to the kids. It's so important to listen to the kids. Please don't dismiss the kids because you thinking that these kids don't know what they're talking about. It's a matter of using discernment because, yes, there's some kids out there who may try to, you know, try to manipulate and so on and so on. But it's up to you to use your discerning spirit or whatever the case may be. Just look, observe, and, you know, just pay attention and go with your gut feeling. I say all that to... Thank you, spirit. And I remember this situation where uh, I told you guys that I had uh, this last job that I had worked before I decided that I was done. I was done. I was done. You know, I, I worked at this uh, child care center after I close my business or whatever because i guess god was giving me that opportunity to to ask me hey, are you done now okay are you done all right have you had enough yet so i say all that to say for four months i worked at this place and um uh, one of the ladies that came on she also too was a former child care provider and which is so funny because i was and so was she and it just so happened that she was telling me about a situation it's funny because her and her spouse um had just i think they separated or divorced to or something like that she said i can't remember what she said they got a divorce or they separate one of the two but anyway she was telling me how her and her spouse was still communicating apparently he had dealt with the situation i'm just telling you guys it's not to you know share i'm just telling you situations like what some kids can possibly go through that's why it's up to you to pay attention and listen you know and pay attention to your surroundings you know just and, and observe you know before acting should i say because just to make sure what you're seeing is correct uh, but she had mentioned, she told me one day that she said her spouse had called her and told me, she was like, girl, she said he told me that some, uh, he, a situation he had dealt with that was pertaining to a kid. I can't remember. She said he was about 12 or maybe 15 or something like that. But apparently something happened to where the kid was, he was outside in just his underwears. And I was like, huh? And then I was like, oh my God. Like, you know, cause when it comes down to the kids, you know, I'm all for the kids or whatever, but. I say all that, to, but I also use my discernment as well, too. But I say all that to say that um, she said that he was in his underwear. And thank God it was like, I guess it was warm outside. I think it, I think it was warm outside or something like that. But anyway, something happened to the point that he had a situation. I can't remember if she said that he was bleeding or something from bleeding 
from something. So anyway, I, what I'm hearing spirits say, it, obviously it was a situation where maybe their parents were beating up on them in a sense. And it could have been a foster parent. It could have been this child's biological parents. I'm not sure. But nevertheless, her husband was, uh, I think he was still in the military, right? See, my spouse is former military, which is funny because we had some similarities. My spouse is former military. Uh, I'm separated from, he's former military, so her spouse was in the military, so what had happened was, I don't know if they stayed on base or had a house off base, but anyway, they were separated. So I say all that to say that he ran into the situation, saw the kid who was outside and all, all he was in was his underwear or whatever, and basically he was asking the kid was whether he was okay or whatever, and apparently not, so basically he took the kid and drove the kid to the police station and um trying to get the kids some help or whatever i can't remember everything that she exactly said because that was almost like two years ago but i say all that to say that she was telling him that could have been a situation that really could have went wrong somebody could have thought that he was the one that abused this kid and so on and so on but thank god it didn't go that way but in other words he kind of stepped in he helped out and he intervened on behalf of this kids and getting the kids some help you know that they needed so i'm saying all that to say this next dream i saw i saw like a kid like i felt like i was a kid or a teenager in this dream and i felt like i was running from somebody like I don't know who the person was, but it's like the house that I had ran to, these people were trying to hide me in a sense, trying to keep me safe because I was basically telling them what was going on with me or whatever. And then apparently whoever it was that um, in this dream, so I say all that to say whoever's dealing with whatever they're dealing with it could be their biological parents it could be somebody who just has temporary custody over them it could be somebody who is who has uh who's in a foster care system i don't know but apparently they came knocking on the person's door whose house that they might have speculated that they might have been at and i saw like it was it, it came in a form as if like I was hiding underneath a bed. So I was obviously seeing this through someone else's eyes. This kid was like hiding underneath a bed in a sense. And then it's like they ran from that section and then they ran to another section to where there was like uh, some sort of passageway in the floor, like a passageway in the floor. You know, like how you have a attic and you have like a little... A little opening for an attic and you have to pull it down and you got the little stairs to walk on it was something similar to that but there was like a little passageway in the floor to the point that they were kind of hiding in there as well too so i don't know who that message is for but you know kudos go to you for you know just stepping up and just doing what's right and trying to you know get someone the proper help that they need because i know nine times out of ten nowadays not nowadays, but I know some of these, I did a prophetic message on this some time ago too. I don't mean to, to, to keep rambling on, but people were meant to allow the kids to speak for themselves, you know, allow them to be able to speak for themselves and not speak for them. In other words, like telling them, you know, and I'm not saying you don't have parental duties. Yes. But if a child didn't say that they want to do it, then, you know, there's a, it's almost like you have to balance the two. Uh, Cause it came in a form as if, I don't want to repeat myself too much, but it came in a form as if like, let's just say a child was leaving a child care center and then somebody said something like, uh, yeah, you, you want to come stay the night with me, right? Oh yeah, she want to come stay the night with me. But then the child didn't say that, but it's like the adult saying that. And then it's like in the, in the dream, it was like, I was saying to the person, like she didn't say that. So don't be speaking for her in a sense. So in other words, like allow her to speak for herself. In other words, is what I'm saying. So anyway, so um, I saw that message yeah, that energy kind of came up before too where somebody was hiding somebody in a sense and it wasn't hiding them in a in a in a way that they were hiding them for wrong reasons they was hiding them for for trying to help them should i say anyway so let me move on thank you spirit so this next dream came through it was as um Oh, okay okay so this next dream so some of you guys may find yourself dealing with that during this holiday season if you had a holiday party holiday get together because that's kind of like what it kind of came through family get together take it how it resonates so what it was and it may not come the way it's being presented to me you have to figure out 
because your situation may be different. The situations may be the same, but the scenario is going to be different, should I say. Um, so I say all that to say this one came through as if there were two people who was upstairs, like in the kitchen area and everybody else was down in the basement, right? Like having a family get together down in the basement. So it's like these people came up from the basement, but as they came up from the basement, these two people that were standing in the kitchen, it's almost like they were, I got the feeling like they were, um, they were, I don't know if I want to say flaunting with each other. They were, they were showing some interest towards one another. Let me say that. Cause I got a feeling like they were doing something to each other. But then when they heard the people coming up from the basements, they kind of stepped back from each other in a sense, like they didn't want anybody to see what they were doing. But it just so happened that when the people started coming up from the basement, they were looking like, what's going on here? Like something ain't right. What's going on? And I got the feeling like their partner was in the basement, but they were upstairs in the kitchen with somebody else who was there visiting their home. So, and then the spirit is also showing it to me in a sense, like it was almost too, like there was a situation of like, uh, maybe two people who have, um, who have maybe been undercover, like bisexual in a sense. Who, um, who are like undercover maybe in all of us, you know, I'm not gonna even say that because, well, that's kind of what I'm feeling like, Maybe those feelings came from out of nowhere towards the two of them and they just kind of ended up, it was almost like they were being drawn to each other is what I'm hearing spirits say, like they were being drawn to each other for some particular reason. But again, when they heard everybody else coming up from the basement, they heard up and did this. And I think <clears throat> the people coming up from the basement, they sensed something was going on. And I remember the look on the person's face was looking like, what's going on here? Like, well, what, what's going on? Why, why y'all moving away from each other like that? Like, they knew that something wasn't right. So let me move on from that. So take that how that resonates. Some of you guys may find yourself dealing with that, whether it be some feelings coming from out of nowhere or whether you getting in touch with some feelings that you never explored before. And, you know, that could be, you know, it's going to be different for different people. But anyway, so... Okay, so this this is funny because these two messages correlate with each other. So this message came, and that's why I said it's going to be during this holiday season. Some of you guys are going to be having, and what I'm hearing spirits say, a faded event. And I say all that to say because I'm seeing it two ways. Two ways of a sense of, okay, so this just say like, it, it came through like my ex. Like, not, when I say my ex, like my ex before the person that I married, should I say. So I say all that to say, it was as if like I had visited his family's house in a sense. And for some particular reason, like I was talking to his dad, I went to go visit his dad in the dream. So as I was visiting his dad and talking to him and we was just kind of talking and reminiscing or whatever, all of a sudden I had asked him, I said, yeah, well, what's such and such? Cause apparently I hadn't seen him in so long that I had asked, yeah, how such and such is doing. And then as soon as I said that, lo and behold, I went to, I'm not sure if it was like the restroom or I went to go do something and I walked away from him. And then lo and behold, I hear him talking to somebody out in the living room and then I can hear who it was. It was my ex showing up at his, uh, at his dad's house, parents' house, take it how it resonates. And he, <clears throat> he showed up at the house. So when he showed up at the house and I was coming back towards, I guess, the living room area where they was at. And then he was sitting down and he had someone with him, which was a girlfriend or whatever the case may be. And he was sitting down, excuse me, y'all. <coughs> All this talking, give me a second. So he was sitting down and, excuse me, he was sitting down on a chair when I walked out. And as he was sitting, I kind of went like this on the side of his his knees and I said hey 
you know, I was just saying basically, hey, or whatever, because he sat there and he didn't say anything like, like as if he didn't see me or like, oh, she's here. And then his girlfriend, she was sitting like over on another couch. He was sitting like on a little almond chairs. Uh, I think that's what you, ottoman, would you put your feet up on that part of the chair? And she was sitting like on the couch area. I don't know if it was his girlfriend. I kind of got the feeling like it was his girlfriend or just maybe somebody he was talking to or whatever, but she was sitting over there. So I went and sat down beside her and I said, hey, well, I'm such and such. You know, I stuck my hand out to introduce myself or whatever. And it's almost like, I was having to be the be bigger, the better person, should I say, because he saw me, he didn't say anything, and he kind of had this look on her face like, why is she here? And his girlfriend, she didn't know what was going on, but I basically introduced myself. She introduced herself, and she seemed like she was a little chatty catty. <laughs> so I say all that to say, some of you guys may find yourself dealing with somebody who may be a little talkative or whatever the case may be, because the first thing I thought to myself in a dream, I was like, oh, she likes to talk. <laughs> but anyway, so with that being said, it could be told the opposite, you know, whether somebody likes to talk or not like to talk, but that's just how it showed up in the dream. So again, some of you guys may find yourself having these faded events and you were meant to have these events because one or two things has happened is what I'm hearing spirits say. One, you're going to realize that either you weren't over this person or two, you're going to realize it's almost like the female was being the bigger person because she spoke and introduced herself. It's almost like she was reconfirming what I'm hearing spirits say is like reconfirming her feelings like, yeah, like I'm, I'm totally done with that. I'm closing out that chapter. It's a wrap it's a closure I, I you know i no longer need that experience like it's a closure for me in other words so it's almost like some people receiving some closures and then some people realizing that you know um that they're not happy where they are right now in certain relationships that they have chosen anyway so moving on to the next message Hold on, y'all. I'm just trying to read through it real quick. So some of you guys are going to either, either you're going to see this. And if you're not seeing this, either you're going to be actually witnessing this and when i say see it i mean like see it in a dream and maybe you just may not understand what's taking place well i know god is revealing some things to some people and showing people's true intentions of you know revelation giving them revelations of just how people are just their hidden agendas like what they're not saying up front but how they're really feeling behind the scene in the word in other words because it came through in this dream as if you know someone in my family let's just say hypothetically so I can understand the dream. Someone in my family, as if they didn't want me to be around the kids, should I say. So it was almost like they were distancing the kids from me, in a sense. But in the walk of life, it's almost like they're not telling me this. And they act like everything is okay. I'm just giving you guys an example. They act like everything is okay in the real world, the physical world. But then behind closed doors, it's like God is revealing to me their true intentions or whatever. It's like they don't want me to really be around the kids, in other words. So again, I'm just saying that as an example. So some of you guys are going to find yourself, because that's how the message came through. Some of you guys are going to find yourself being shown uh, some people's true intentions. So when you see the information, just pay attention because it's coming up for you. Um, either, like I said, either you're seeing this in a dream or either you're there witnessing what's taking place but it's up to you to just listen to your gut feeling and if you're getting a feeling about something listen to your feeling you know stand in your own personal power and you know listen to your uh listen to your solar plexus when it's talking to you you know and i say all that to say because that's our gut feeling you know that's our intuition that's what's there to navigate us and lead us and guide us so keep that in mind as well, too. So again, some things are just going to be revealed in regards to whether it be family, friends, or co-workers, boss, take it how it resonates. So I received another message, and this one came in a form of... Hold on, y'all.
just trying to read through this other one. Give me a second. Okay, this one's this one's important too. So just pay attention to this one. So this one came through as if someone was trying to apply for like a let's just say a loan, some sort of loan. Like it could be a car loan, house loan. Take it how it resonates. But I saw that I, I really felt the feeling of somebody kind of discriminating against somebody. Like it's automatically right off the bat. They was like, I don't care what you do. You can fill out this form. And it's like, I'm not going to approve you. So it's almost like they filled out a form and automatically was like denied in a sense. That's how it kind of came through. And then it got to the point that it pissed because in the dream, it was like my brother-in-law, but, you know, um, a family member of mine that has passed away, uh, my former brother-in-law, but it came through as if he was like applying for this loan, for whatever the loan was, and it was like he was denied for it, so he became upset, and because he became upset, he didn't become upset and start, you know, tearing things up. He just became upset, and it was always like, okay... Well, you know, you want to deny me the loan? Okay, I'ma just, I'ma just basically show you how you're, how you're, um, I'm, because basically on every piece of paper that he had, let's just say if he had like five pieces of paper that was part of the loan process, on each paper I saw him writing down, on each paper was a representation of how they were discriminating against him in a sense of, well, okay, well, you don't want to apply me for this loan. This is where you're discriminating and so on and so on. And, you know, you're not being equally fair and, you know, it, you know, the law states, blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. So in other words, it's like crossing the T's and dotting the I's or whatever. But I saw that was a situation of somebody having to experience that. And just to let you know ahead of time. So again, I'm not sure if it's to buy a house, car, you know, just a quick loan. I don't know, but I'm just here just to deliver the message. That's how it came through. And then another message was, okay, so another message came through was, I got a, I saw a dream of these new structures being built. Thank you, spirit. New structures being built. And I'm thinking like in a dream, I'm thinking like the new structures, like new buildings, like they just started appearing every place. So I'm not sure if these structures are actual buildings or if the new renovation and constructions of each and individual person, you know, like, You know, like when you see something arise and that's new and up and coming, uh, I saw it came in a form as if it's buildings, like new buildings are being built and, and on, on, on the uprise. But again, I'm not sure if it's actual buildings or if it's a rep the building is a representation of the people being built up in a sense, a new way. Take it how it resonates. Because that's how Spirit was just showing it to me a second ago. Thank you, Spirit. Because in a dream when I saw it, I thought it was just actual buildings being built up, you know. But Spirit had just let me know, you know, you can see it two ways. That way and the other way. The new construction of people, in other words. I hope I'm not confusing you. Anyway. So this other message came through as if. Okay, so this message came through. Now, pay, uh, just, uh, just be mindful of this. Like, be mindful of the different... I don't know. I, I kind of was getting the feeling of when I received this message, be mindful of certain... And what I'm hearing is entities that you plug into. And when I say that institutions, you know, whether it be schools, you know, whether it be you know, certain jobs, whether it be, um, yeah, just whether it be those certain things, uh, certain things, just be mindful of the things that you plug into. Cause the way I saw it was, it was as if this dream had came, like my son had had an appointment, right? And it was so weird because in real life, my son actually 
was supposed to have an appointment, but it's almost like I, I've been kind of questioning like this new office that I was trying to deal with in a sense, but it's almost like, it was almost like God was giving me a revelation because something had happened to the point of I was reading the paperwork and I was like, wait a minute, you know, they were saying basically that you need a referral. And I was like, wait a minute. Well, when I called and scheduled an appointment, they said nothing at all about the referral, you know, reminding me because, you know, sometimes us as the people, if we're not on the receiving end of doing the things that they do, you don't necessarily remember that you need to get a referral, should I say. So I say all that to say I had to cancel the appointment. But when I canceled the appointment, it was so funny because I received a dream that night and in the dream, it came through like my son had an appointment and take it how it resonates because it could be different for everybody else. But that was just the message that I received it. My son had an appointment and it just so happened like because he had an appointment. So just bear with me what I'm about to say. I know it sounds a little weird, but just bear with me because that's how God was giving it to me. He had an appointment. So we took him to his appointment. And it's like when we took him to his appointment, it was almost like aha, I got you in the door. Now that I got you in the door, it's almost like I just need him, whether it be, because in the dream it showed up as if they needed my spouse. They wanted to sell him something. They wanted to sell him something is what I was getting. Like they wanted to sell him something and whatever it was they wanted to sell him, they managed to get him to buy it. And then I got upset with him in the dream because I was like, this appointment was supposed to be for him, not for you. So why are they trying to get you to buy something from them? Because it was almost like they just wanted his signature in a sense. Like they wanted him to sign off on something. And once they got his signature, it was like, I got you. That's how, that's how the message came through. So take it how it resonates. It just came through that way. I don't know if it came through that way because I actually had an appointment, but... Uh, again, that message is for somebody. So just be mindful of just, you know, just to, again, the different entities and, you know, things that you're attaching yourself to. That's what, thank you, Spirit. That's what I'm hearing, like attaching yourself to certain things. Anyway, so the next message is, and again, I'm just here just to be the deliverer of the message. So don't get upset with the messenger. And this next message I saw, um, I saw... An unseen force dealing with two people and it was so weird because I think last year around about this same time it was like the ancestors were dealing with people because I know in one dream two years ago I felt like this unseen force pulling my ponytail like snatching me back like this and I was like oh what was that and it was like the ancestors right so I'm not sure if that's the same situation as now but I know I it was I know I saw two people, like a man and a woman, dealing with an unseen force. And it was as if that force was, like, pulling them in a certain direction. So, uh, I can't say how it's going to come, but I kind of got the feeling like it was snatching them to the ground, in a sense. Like, pulling them to the ground, in a sense. So, take it how it resonates. Because even though they was pulling them to the ground, they could have been pulling them together or pulling them apart or just doing whatever. But I just got a feeling like they was just... You know, just being pulled, should I say. So be mindful of that as well, too. Anyway, so... And then this one, it, this one is a little weird, too. So... And I've been asking for revelation for this one, but I said, you know, I'm going to just record a video and hope the Spirit give me the message that I need to give. But anyway, this one came in a form of, it was this this big ass white blob, right? So imagine like a, a snake. A, and, and I know some people don't like snakes. Um, so imagine a snake, right? And imagine a snake in a hallway. And imagine a snake usually tries to stay, sometimes a snake may be in the middle of a hallway or a lot of times they'll try to stay close to the wall and squirm along the walls of a of a hallway so this came in a form as it was this big ass blob right and it was really long and it was moving slow i wish i could i wish i could really uh describe what it looks like uh to you because it had like a a face not like our face but it had like some eyes that just looked a little weird and it had like a little mouth or whatever but it was just moving along like you know, kind of like this, just itching very slowly. But I say all that to say that it was moving along the side of the wall and it's like it was leaving out of a house. I got the feeling like it was leaving out of a house going out the door. And it was white 
the whole thing was white, but I, I really got the feeling of it was a sense of a like um <sighs> you know blob. You know the blobs that people the kids will play with? It was a imagine a blob being very long. I mean this thing was like long and it was moving very slow, but it I knew it was heading out the door is what I saw. It it was white and it had like these little black specks on it. And I was just like, white with black specks. That, you know, that was a representation of like, white is representation of purity and the black specks was a representation of something that was like, has like, excuse me y'all, <coughs> excuse me. Um, something that has like, I mean, because it was just like black specks here and there. And the way it was moving, I was getting the feeling that it was leaving. I knew it was leaving because I got the feeling of, thank you, spirit. I got the feeling of, you know how something, you know, um, you know how a sloth moves very slow. Like, like maybe this energy was kind of holding some of you up and keeping you held back well which is so funny because i actually had a conversation with my daughter right and we usually share you know what you know what we sometimes we usually share what you know what we dream it's so funny because i had that dream that same night and she also told me she told me first before i told her mind that she had actually had one and she you know felt that like and it was almost kind of what i was describing with, it was almost like what I was describing, but she was feeling it on a certain area, you know. She was feeling it like on a certain area. And then, you know, when she woke up, she realized it wasn't there, whatever the case may be. So I kind of got the feeling like this energy was just, it's like, an, it's some sort of energy that was just like there and... I'm kind of getting a feeling like because like I said white represents purity it's almost like I don't know I'm getting the feeling like spirit is saying like th th this blob or whatever was almost like clearing clearing out anything that wasn't serving because like I said when I saw it I was thinking to myself like Ugh. <laughs> you know like it just it looks weird because the eyes on it, I don't know if you guys seen the fifth element because that's how I tried to describe it to it like the eyes on that little thing when the little man had his hair over to the side and he was like uh he was in his office and he was choking on the little thing he's like ah, 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 and the little thing was like hey, hey, hey. the little elephant thing was on his desk well the eyes look like that thing on <laughs> that little blob thing or whatever but if you guys ever seen fifth element but anyway I know it sounds weird but yeah, but it was just moving very slowly and it was like on its way out the door. I get a feeling like it's, and what I'm hearing is like cleaning house. Like it was cleaning house is what I'm hearing. Let me move on. Thank you, spirit. Anyway, so this other message, this is the last one, y'all. This last message came in a form of, I saw some people look like they was having some sort of disagreement. And I say all that to say because it was like, I'm not sure if it was a, um, I kind of got the feeling like maybe it was a family because it, it looked like the setting was like, I don't know if it was like, I kind of got the feeling like it was like at a hospital, but I didn't feel like it was at a hospital. You know what the energy was reminding me of. If you guys ever been into a Kaiser building, Kaiser's building, you know, if you have Kaiser insurance, um, sometimes when you walk in there, sometimes Kaiser looks like a, 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 a hospital setting, you know, some of them. Uh, when you walk in there sometimes, you know, sometimes they have the special centers for that specialize in certain areas or whatever, but kind of got the feeling like it was some sort of Kaiser building, like, people were standing there talking to each other. And I'm not sure if they were family members in regards to a situation, in regards to a situation pertaining to a family member. So anyway, those are all the messages. And let me pull some cards real quick, y'all. I didn't mean to make this long and I'll make it a point to 
I had to take care of, of me first, y'all. So I'm sorry, but y'all had to come last. Anyway. Oh, and I'm sorry. Let me tell you this real quick, too. Thank you, Spirit. I almost forgot. So, the last few days I've been here yesterday, this song was playing very heavily on my heart. And it was saying, it's the song by Fred Hammond. I put it in the description box below. So, you might want to go listen to it. But it says, um, this is what God was telling me through the music. He was like, in Fred Hammond's song, said, Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. I think I'm saying it the opposite way. He's going to turn it around and around. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. He's going to turn it around and around. Forgive me, y'all, <laughs> the way I'm singing, but I just wanted to tell you that because it was a message there. So God's turning around situations. You know, you may not see it yet. But trust me, it's slowly but surely being done. And um, things are going to work in your favor is what I'm hearing. And then um, this song came through the other day. It kept it kept playing in my head. <laughs> and it was like, uh, it was, and I'm going to put this one in the description box below to you. So you might want to listen to it and just get it in your spirit now. Because honestly, God loves when we have an attitude of gratitude. More importantly, being thankful for getting you this far being thankful for getting you through any in every situation because when i'm hearing spirit say that some of us have been in situations that you thought that you would have never made it out of or made it through you know whether it be um situations that you thought that you couldn't make it through whether it be addictions you know whether it be a relationship situation feeling like you can't live without the other person you know whether it, whatever it may be everybody's situation is going to be different um, but God just wants you to, to, to just know that be thankful, you know, that you've made it this far because I lied to you not Mary, Mary keeps showing up on my timeline. I told you guys this the other day for some particular reason that doesn't normally happen, but it kept saying, it's like, God's just saying, don't give up. Just don't give up. Just keep, keep going. Just keep going. I'm, you're almost there. And I know sometimes we've been hearing that for a minute, but he's, he see things that we cannot see. And I say all that to say, Spirit is bringing it back to my attention when, um, thank you, Spirit, bringing it back to my attention back in 2018, um, I had this dream, right? And I had this dream that came through as if I was like, it made it seem like it was at a convenience store, like a little convenience store but it was funny because it's like we was having a team meeting there even though i didn't work there but we was having auditions there right and then i remember this one person who was like the casting director and they was like well you're gonna play this part you're gonna play this part and you're gonna play that part when it got to me it was telling me that i was gonna have to play a goddess right so i was like i didn't even understand what that meant at the time so i was like a goddess I was like, okay. So I just kind of brushed it off or whatever the case may be. And then slowly but surely as time went on, I, I remember that, you know, everything that I dream of, I always try to store it in the back of my mind and just allow it to be, you know, at the time I didn't even realize they were prophetic messages that was coming through, but I just knew that I always been a dreamer ever since I was around about the age of three and a half to four. I can remember back that far of dreaming. And, you know, at some point in time, we shut those abilities down along the way. <clears throat> And then for me, it kind of picked back up when I was somewhere around 20, 20, between 22 and 24 years of age or whatever. So I say all that to say that, um, yeah, like, uh, I was so thankful because the spirit was bringing that to my attention again, you know, in regards to the situation. But anyway, so this other song that came through, it says, I want to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. I just kept hearing that one play too. So anyway, I'm going to put those in the description box below. So if you choose to hear those songs and just, you know, allow it to speak to you, allow it to minister to you. Oh, shoot. And there was one other passage too that I told you guys that I had pushed my Bible to the side, you know, some years ago because I felt like God was just trying to show me there was more things out here rather than just that word or whatever the case may be. And it wasn't the fact that I don't respect the Bible. It's just that that's where God had me at that point in time because 
you know, there was just so much that was just going on with it. God was just opening me up to so many more possibilities that are out here. And again, there's times that I do reference scriptures, scriptures from the Bibles, you know, that I do remember and so on and so on. But I'm going to run and get it real quick because I think it's really important and it's tying into the messages too and some of this path that has been going along the way. But let me say this real quick. So as I said, it said, the song says, I want to thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. So give me one second. Forgive me, y'all. So this message came through right. So the other day, like, <sighs> so I had pulled this out the other day, right? For some particular reason. But when I pulled it out, I pulled it out to this other scripture where it was talking about Ahab, I think it was. And I read it. Then I think it was talking about his wife and how she was <sighs> Ahab. Something about how she was doing wrong in a sense like she was you know how they would use the little the sign seals that they used back in the day when they would have the little red thingy clay like and they seal it well apparently she had sent out a message to all the people and she was plotting against she was plotted against i can't remember who it was she was plotting and she was trying to get all the people to do this and do that and basically it was going against basically going against the order of god but i say all that to say i read that i didn't like what i saw but nevertheless it reminded me of kind of like this journey in a sense things along the way but then i closed the bible right and then i opened it back up and i said lord well i closed it and then i said lord what message do you want to give me right so to me it was like a form of like my tarot cards show me what message you want me to see so I say all that to say, I opened up the book and I had my eyes closed and I just went like this and wherever my hand landed, that's the scripture that I read, right? So the, the scripture that came to mind, it said, it was in Malachi 1.8 and it says, and if he offers the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if, if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? It says, offer it now unto the governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person? Says the Lord of hosts. So basically, in other words, God was trying to, basically what God was trying to say, because apparently these people in the, was, was bringing God these sacrifices, right? It's talking about the sins of the priesthood and how they would bring the lame, you know, the lame, I guess the lame animals or, you know, Take it how it resonates. Consider the people. Consider people on this journey. And the way God was speaking to me. So he took the animals out of the equation, right? And it's almost like he was telling me to put myself in the equation. And that's kind of how this journey been. So there's been so many situations to where people have been kind of sacrificing other people. And I don't mean like literally sacrificing them. In some situations, there have been some of that going on behind the scenes and the dark underworld that you know some of us don't know about but in a sense of this journey where people and it came through like because there's been so many people let's just say this uh let me just say like there's been one group of people who pretty much didn't know their history in other words so it's almost like Whereas other people in other cultures has traditions and, you know, know their history, should I say. But we as color people haven't really known our history because it's been tampered with, whitewashed, and so on and so on. But I don't want to get into all that. 
But I say all that to say that it's like people knew things by hiding things and keeping things from us. So it's almost like people were able to see who we were. And that's why so many of us have been at some point in time being suppressed, being feeling like what I'm hearing spirits say, feeling like you feel like you had your, your, uh, someone's foot on your neck, like you couldn't move, you couldn't do this and you couldn't do that. And, and just know that those things had served for a purpose for us to get to a time as such, you know, where people are really rising and understanding who they are and they were meant to take back their personal power and understand that um, you are a sovereign being and that you are free and that nobody is uh, has any power nor any control over you. Um, and we were meant to experience that and understand that. So I say all that to say it's almost like the sick and the lame people would be so much like kind of like the black people in a sense, like they didn't know themselves. So we was almost like being a sacrificial lamp to other people, in other words. So I say all that to say, that's almost like what God was giving me in regards to that. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. And I don't mean to confuse y'all, but I just, I wanted to share that because I felt like I was, you know, wanted to share that message. Just so you guys understand that we have been like a sacrificial lamb to other people. So now is the time that God is getting us to see and understand who we are so that, you know, we can heal this shit and move on from it, you know? And when I say move on, don't, that doesn't mean forget about it, you know, because again, when you forget about stuff, you're, they say when you forget about it, you're, you're most likely are susceptible to repeating the past or whatever. So it's a matter of knowing who you are standing in your own personal power and knowing that you have power and authority over yourself. You know, when I say you have power and authority over yourself, of course there's integrity. You know, you see that sign back there, right? Doing the right thing when nobody's watching. That doesn't mean go out here, go steal, take from somebody else and do things that other people have been doing. No, that's not having integrity. Thank you, Spirit. What message do you have for the collective? What do you want me to know? What message do you want the collective to know? That is a real white light and pure unconditional love. Thank you, Spirit. Bear with me, y'all. One more shuffle. I didn't mean to make this message long and I'll make sure to try to point to stay on top of these uh, messages because when I get behind like that, I make the video too long and I don't want to lose you guys in the process. We'll take that one. And I just said, oh my God, like, as they say, you can't make this shit up. <laughs> Thank you, spirit. Feel like you're saying, one more shuffle. Are there any more messages, spirit? Y'all saw that car fly out, right? Ooh, that one flew out too. Wow. Okay, let me shuffle these other cards real quick before I do this one so I can just do it all at one time. Oh, I'm sorry. Second card is Divine Masculine, which is funny because I've been seeing 222 lately. Seeing on the license plates. I saw it on the phone earlier. <laughs> it's like. What message do you have? What's the overall message that you have? Why is this communication authority and divine message card here? What message do you want the collective to know?
bear with me because these cards are kind of long too. What message do you have for the collective spirit? cards. I'm sorry. It's the letting go card. Mm, this card flipped over. You see it? Just so you don't think I'm pulling it. Hold on, y'all. One more. What up? It's the overall message, Spirit. Thank you. Anyway, okay, so hold on. Okay, all right, so this first card it says communication, right? And then it says, the frequency of communication supports our ability to exchange information in many different forms. It reminds us to run every piece of information, both incoming and outgoing, through our heart, the center of our truth, to stay in the flow of source and balance and exchange. So in other words, if you're coming from a place of speaking from your head, that's not being balanced because you're too much in your head. You're meant to come from your heart space. What what really drives you? What really makes you happy? What really makes you, what you really love to do is store it right there in your heart space. What it is you want to do? Where did you want to go? Who it is you want to be with? What is it you want to be? All of that is stored right there in your heart space. It's not stored here. It's stored here. So be mindful of that. And then I have the uh, letting, I mean, uh, authority. I just said that nobody has power nor authority over you. The frequency of authority reminds us that true authority is powerful, directed and realized, yet receptive, wise and loving. I'm going to read this one real quick because I'm feeling like I'm being divinely, divinely guided to read it. The word authority has mostly been used to describe the power that rules, govern, lead, lead, direct, or control, and protect. It has also been closely associated with the power, the powers that dominate, suppress, enforce, demand, and, and scare us. I've said that, right? People had their foot on our necks, right? Oh, God. You couldn't show up at a better time. True, true authority is generated by maternally knowledge wisdom experience and inner balance this kind of power comes from within where is it deeply rooted in a solid connection to source externally this power expresses itself as present the ability to be completely in the moment with full awareness of every aspect of oneness all sense fully engaged while being completely centered in the heart and Commun communication just also says something about the heart. <laughs> anyway, it says, um, where went? Initially, this power steps back to witnessing, allowing us to perceive and discern without attachment from all things. A new form of authority arises, one that leads, share, directs, and conducts with benevolence, benevolence, grace, compassion, and wisdom, and integrity. I did not just say that. Integrity. I said that. Um, where was I at? This kind of authority inspires, 
truth, creation, collaboration, and partnerships. It is receptive in nature and expresses the journey inward where connections with self and source become one. And I said that earlier, and I said going within and working, you know, healing what needs to be healed from within and working its way outward, in other words. Grain represents the energy that, that abundantly flows from the heart. Uh, turquoise represents the high heart chakra, sometimes referenced as the rhythm chakra, uh, excuse me, the thymus chakra. The place where hearts and throats energetically merge into loving expressions of truth. Gold and yellow represents abundance, truth, enlightenment, and self-realization. The numerology three is associated in catalyst number. It stands for an energy that speeds up or creates a reaction between two related things without necessarily changing itself. And there are many sixes in this image. It has mostly been our conscious mind that has determined whether or not we believe something if there is enough evidence, logically or scientific facts. I just said that, right? We stay too much right here rather than being in our heart space. <laughs> in supporting of a thing, we consider it to be true and therefore believe it. In the new energy, it, is, it isn't enough to rely solely on analytical or logical mind to determine our truths or our beliefs because you're about to be activated to the point that your heart space is about to be activated you can't no longer rely on this you have to rely on this to navigate you what, what do you feel our world is rapidly being saturated with more and more multi-dimensional elements like memories from other lifetimes or dimensions enhance extraterrestrial and i just said that right i said higher perspective when i said that the spaceship showed up the helicopter was there and the light was there i hope you guys watch this to the end so you know it's not just me concocting this you saw me shuffling these cards on this on the video so i say all that to say it's talking about extraterrestrial so that higher activation you know higher mindset higher perspective you know that's you know some people are going to start to experience i'm sorry i'm getting excited because i love when spirit shows up so you guys don't just think oh well what she getting this information from what's she pulling this stuff from <laughs> but anyway um what was that uh, bear with me y'all multi-dimensional what was that control heart intuition um humans being i'm gonna just start from here um shoot where was that navigating through the existence of new world okay navig we we have to rely on our other parts of ourselves beyond the conscious mind to navigate through the existing new world and that's what you know i told you in this new paradigm the old one is fading away excuse me and this new one is existing and you can't do the things that you did excuse me oh can't do the things that you were doing before or trying to navigate the way that you did before because that's changing and it's not going to work. So if you find yourself being frustrated about something is because that's usually a block that's letting you know that there's a block there because you're trying to do things the old way and you can't. You have to change your mindset. You have to change your perception and you have to just kind of go along with the flow. Whatever the energy is presenting you because when you go against the flow, that's when the, it feels like the frustration and all the other stuff takes place. We are in the process of uh, discovering how critical our hearts and our intuit intuitions are. They need, the, uh, I'm sorry, they need to be considered as valuable as our analy analytical mind in determining our beliefs. To thrive in this new energy as co-creational, multidimensional human beings who are controlled who are in control of their reality it is essential that we believe we are these beings self-worth is critical we have to believe without just shed of a doubt that we are powerful creators just as magical requires a deep and unwavering conviction on the part of the magician we have to believe that anything is possible especially those things that make no sense to our logical mind changing our reality starts with a deep and deeply rooted belief that we can and then it says the color pink is associated with the universal love 
of, of oneself and others with sweetness, tenderness, and care. Brighter pink brings in an aspect of aliveness and excitement, high energy. And I told you we're about to be activated because that heart chakra is about to be activated. <clears throat> the star in the middle can be a beacon for inspiration and indicating our connection to the heavens and the universe that source our that source our beliefs if necessary however the star can be used as a as a shrunken shrunkens shrunkens i'm not sure what that is shrunkens or a japanese throwing star oh Sh shrunk shrunkens it says the japanese star um a precious and powerful weapon indicating that the power of conviction that is sometimes necessary to blast our way through old ways of thinking. Wow. Thank you, Spirit, for showing up. I see why Spirit had me read this card. And this is just a little quick little demonstration that you can do if you choose to. It says, close your eyes, take a deep breath and answer this. Do you believe that you are a part of source? Meaning like you're part of God. You know, there was a point in time I was telling people, I am God. <laughs> and people looking at me like, what? You know, but I believe at the time I was saying it, I was coming from a, I, it was me stepping into my personal power. And it was a matter of me having to balance it. So when I told people that I was God, I knew that I wasn't God who created heaven and earth, but I know that I, God was within me. So that's why I made that statement that I said that I am God because God is within us all. And you know that it's like, you don't care what other people think. People might've looked at me like, oh, she's cocky. She's arrogant. No, I just knew that God was leading me, guiding me. And I knew that, you know, for me to say me standing here, I know that God lives in me and he lives in each and every one of us. But it's a matter of you knowing that he lives within you and just just having that knowing that he is, you know, it's something about having that knowing when you know that God is within you, you carry that energy and it's almost like, it's almost like it's a force that can't be reckoned with is what I'm, is what I'm hearing. In other words, anyway, so, and it didn't, it says, uh, do you believe your power is so great that you can create anything you desire in your life? When was the last time you stood under the stars and demanded that the universe grant you your wishes? Try it tonight. Let's see what happens when we try it tonight, right? I'm going to definitely try it because I'm like, Lord, I've been sitting here for too long. It's time for a breakthrough, <laughs> you know, and I do know that some things are divine timing, but, you know, I, I, I try not to be too demanding, although at times when, you know, I have my moments when I, I go crying to God and I was like, why are you lying this to happen? Why are you lying these people to you? You know, I understand my worth, you know, and I'm dissing myself from people and blah, 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 and so on and so on. And I lie to you now, the moment that I vent and go cry to God or whatever, it's like he give me some sort of revelation and he shows me things or he tells me things. So, you know, I say all that to say, try it. Anyway, so we have this other card that says divine masculine. And it says the frequency of divine masculine supports our strong focus and active active side, allowing it to express itself while helping us to bring our dreams and ideas in form with kindness and wisdom. Which is so funny because underneath this divine masculine card, we have the love card, right? And it says, your heart desires, excuse me, let go of your limiting beliefs about love. Your heart desires more connections, love, and nourishment. You are in a point in your life where you need to learn how to truly give and receive love. This card came out before, how to truly give and receive love. In other words, you can't just be expected to give, 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 and give. And as a matter of fact, when you give to the wrong people that sends a message to the universe, Um, I'm sorry. The way, okay, the way Spirit showing it to me is like when you're giving your time and energy and effort to the wrong people, 
especially if God has revealed it to you. If you're giving it to the wrong people, it's almost like you telling the universe that you don't mind them using you in a sense. Like, especially if he has revealed it to you or if he's shown you certain things about these people and you allow them to continue to, and you still deciding to stay in these particular connections or whatever the case may be, it's almost like you're telling the universe that you're not worthy in a sense. Because when you know your worth, you... You eliminate, you get rid of, you toss out, and I don't mean toss out in a nasty way. You know, you 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 get rid of, you know, anything that is not serving you. So, in other words, if somebody's treating you a certain way, if somebody's talking to you a certain way, and you sit there and you tolerate that, you you saying it that you don't have any self worth, you don't have any value. But when you realize your self worth and you eliminate those things out of your life that no longer serves you, um, you're showing the universe that. That, that one, you're trusting God to a spirit, and two, that you are worthy. Fully open your heart will awaken your vulnerability, sensitivity, and fear. In particular, your fear of rejection and intimacy with another person. So I know I did talk about vulnerability when I said that um, I was walking around naked in the dream and I was dancing because I was so happy because I felt liberated. That was a sense of me, you know, a sense of liberation is being, being able to dance naked in the dream allows you to be able to be vulnerable, to be open with people. See, like I'm sitting here, I'm being open and honest with you people, you know, just what certain things, I don't share everything because I feel like some things are sacred, but at the same time, I share things with you. I'm being authentic. I'm, you know, you're seeing my true self, you know, I've told you about the dys dyslexia or whatever the case may be. That's me being authentic for, for years. I kept that to myself and you know went on like as if nobody knew and so on and so on but that was just me deciding to become more vulnerable and and allowing people to see I'm not perfect or you know uh but what does perfect have to mean I I am perfect in my own way that's how God created me that's it is what it is and I have to accept it and and because I accept that, I know my worth, whether I have dyslexia or not. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, we may come with flaws, but that's just a part of who I am. And I accept that side of myself as well, too. You know, so sometimes, you know, you think about the yin and the yang, the good, as you say, the good and the bad, which really meant, which the yin and the yang really represents the masculine and the feminine energy or whatever. And about balance. But if you want to take it there and say it's the good and the bad, you know, it's about, um, you got to take in the good and you got to take in the bad. It's a part of you. It's a part of who you are, you know? But anyway, let me finish. However, you will also unleash your passion, inspirations, greatness, and the ability to care deeply. Start seeing how great life is and be willing to connect to others. If you have been holding on to the past pain, and I said that earlier about holding on to the past. I said you can't move forward until you, you, know, you heal your past. Then it is time to acknowledge, feel, and move forward. Give yourself permission to let people in. Ask for love with all your heart and your soul, and it will come. So in other words, if you want love, but if you come in from a mindset is what I'm hearing spirit say. If you come in from a mindset of, oh, well, you're judging yourself because logically, you're judging yourself because you don't know how something's going to turn out. Well, here's the thing. I don't, I can't say everybody's situation because some people, like I said, in that one dream, like there was somebody from the past that they ran into. The guy didn't look like he was really happy, even though he was with somebody else, but the girl had closure, but the guy didn't look like he had closure because it's almost like he was kind of like, what are you doing here? And maybe he was still holding on to some animosity or whatever the case may be. But nevertheless, she was choosing to take the high road. It was holding him back, should I say, because he was looking at like, why are you here? But I say all that to say that she was getting closure in closing that chapter in her life because she realized that that chapter is closed and she realized that God has something better for her. So whatever your situation may be, if you have something that's going on, you know, you need to heal the past, whether whatever it may be, you know, don't judge yourself and don't attach the outcome of how you think is going to happen because the way you think it may happen, it may not even happen that way. I know a lot of times some of us, we concoct things in our head and we create these fears within ourselves. And when we create these fears within ourselves, it's almost like we, um, we create these scenarios that's not even 
most likely going to even turn out the way we're thinking it, should I say. So that's a lot of energy and effort that you're putting into it, thinking about, oh, well, it may go this way. Oh, it may go that way. The truth of the matter is once you free yourself, once you liberate yourself, you know, and just make that conscious decision that I'm going to step up to the plate and I'm going to either do, say, or what it is that I need to say or do. You know, and I say that to say because it's, like I said, the communication card was here. So, you know, um, it's just a matter of just speaking your truth, you know, and how the other person choose to receive it. It's on them. Give them that grace that that's why God had access to release control and not to manipulate or just to release control and you know, uh, just to release control because the truth of the matter is you don't know what the outcome is going to be. But the truth of the matter is if something is meant for you, it will be. And if something isn't meant for you, well, that's okay. God is just going to politely move it out of your way and then he make room for something else that is meant for you. But I say all that to say you'll never know until you try. And some people may find themselves in a situation that or could find themselves in a situation that they may be lonely for the rest of their life all because they didn't want to take the conscious effort or because they didn't want to make the conscious effort of seeing things from a different perspective all because they and what I'm hearing spirit say that it has a lot to do with their upbringing that's what I'm hearing it, it has a lot to do with the upbringing the walls that you build up that the walls people have built up to protect themselves to keep themselves from being hurt when it's really the opposite when you liberate yourself you free yourself when you hold on and build up walls that's what's keep you stuck in and in the same cycle but anyway thank you spirit so x i'm sorry what was that so start seeing how great life is and, and be willing to connect to others. If you have been holding on to the past pain, when it's time to acknowledge, when it's time to acknowledge, feel and move forward. Give yourself permission to let people in. Ask for love with all your heart and soul and it will come. Look for something beautiful in every person you encounter. Focus on the feelings, the feeling good. Whenever Whenever you see people loving each other and know that this is coming to you in a form of love of a lifetime or an incredible friendship. I know for me, I've been watching these little Christmas movies, right? I didn't put up a tree this year. I really wanted to because I love the little Christmas lights and so on and so on. But uh, I kind of have my little lights. Y'all can't really see it, but there's some up there or whatever that's on that shelf. But I didn't want to feel like putting up a tree this year, but I really like the Christmas lights and all that. So I just got too much stuff going on. But I say all that to say that me and the kids have been watching Christmas movies because it's something about the Christmas movies. It's almost like it puts you in that mood, that mindset of like, you know, like love is coming, you know, like I'm here. I'm open, you know, like grant me my wishes in other words so i say all that to say but you know it's not the old way of just accepting and dealing with old relationships this is new and improved relationships where they're respected it comes from a place of unconditional love where what i'm hearing spirits say the two individual people can be themselves and they don't have to try to conform to anyone else um and basically choosing themselves first in other words choosing themselves first because you can't be in a relationship if you haven't chosen yourself first with somebody else so yeah anyway so this is an action that some of you can take if you so choose to focus on your heart take some slow deep breaths and imagine unlocking the doors to your heart i know that may be hard for some people what does your heart look like is it cold frozen and dark <laughs> and i said that earlier right or is it or is it full of warmth light and sweetness is it cold and gray? Imagine melting the coldness with yellow light. Who do you need to communicate with so that your heart can heal? <laughs> I just said that. Oh my God. Like I told you, and I'm not even reading the communication card. We are reading the, uh-oh. We're reading the love card. This is the card I'm reading. <laughs> uh, so who do you need to communicate with so that your heart can heal? Um, imagine that this person is in front of you now. Say what you need to share without holding back. Now step into their shoes and answer back from the highest place within them. 
Give yourself permission to express, excuse me, give yourself permission to experience an open heart. Every time you want to close your heart, take some deep breaths and choose to keep it open, even if it hurts. So once you get in the habit of doing that, if you hear somebody, let's just say for years and somebody told you, yes, 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 yes. And all of a sudden somebody telling you, no, well, it's not going to even bother you now because if somebody tells you yes or no, you're not even phased by it. It's like, okay, I'll do it. You know what I mean? So I say all that to say like, cause it might've been once upon a time, you know, if I heard a no, I would get upset and so on and so on. Like, because I know the type of person that I am, I, I, I was an over giver, should I say, and not intentionally, but that's just who I was and realized that people wasn't giving to me in return. So I say all that to say, God was getting me to a mindset of learning to say no to other people. And then not only learning to say no to other people, but learning to, he taught me how to be able to say when somebody says no to me, to not get upset about it, just go do what you need to do. And there's no sweat off my back. You know, I'm not upset with them. I just realized that they got something going on. They said no, and it is what it is. You know what I mean? So once we can realize that nobody owes us anything, you know, and if you choosing to share with somebody and you coming from that place of being authentic with it, you know, but not all means, but if you really doing something that you don't want to do and you saying yes to it, then you're not being true to yourself. Anyway, so let's move on. And then we have this discover your life purpose card which was also underneath that Divine Masculine card. Okay, so it says, discover your life purses. Start asking yourself, what is the meaning of your life? As a soul who is having a physical experience, you are here to grow and learn. You are being asked to emerge yourself in this life by expanding stretching and understanding your reason for being here nothing is impossible for a soul who is following her or his destiny your guides angels and your higher self are consistently communicating with you through signs feelings people books etc and i'll give you a classic example somebody told me the other day right and this is just an example somebody told me the other day they said hey they said can you take an um check your your email or whatever the case may be i said why you say that because they said that they was receiving i guess my emails were being directed at their emails and so on and so on but um my emails will somehow will be in social and, and i promise you not the the link that this person was following i didn't even follow these i didn't even click to follow but that's it, it was just letting me know that that was i, I knew it was nobody but god right <laughs> The other person didn't know it. I didn't say anything. I just left it alone. But I knew it was God because that was the synchronicity of the universe, you know, trying to show this individual something. But it wasn't up for me to tell them. So I didn't say anything. So I say all I had to say. They said, I need you to change your settings because it keep directing it at my emails or whatever the case may be. Like my name kept, my maiden name kept showing up um, under whoever it was that they were following and again as i said i didn't even sign up to follow this person or whatever but i did go in there and click uh unsubscribe how i got subscribed i don't know but anyway because it's not even something i don't even eat that type of food <laughs> you know back in the day i would have but i don't even eat that type of food and i i sure as heck didn't even um click on that link or whatever but i say all that to say they were saying because they was getting these emails every since may and apparently they come through there with my name on it. And I knew, well, at first I didn't know, but then at first spirit was speaking to me and said, that's just God, you know, putting your name out there in front of them, you know, as a way to get their attention or whatever the case may be. And it's up to them to, you know, pay attention to that. It's not up for me to hold my hand or to tell them because whereas before I would always give people information and tell them this and tell them that and it's up to them to have to be able to realize that you know God speaks in you know mysterious ways and that's just a mysterious way that he was speaking so anyway I just wanted to share that so I just wanted to let you guys know because spirits bring it to my attention that if you guys see something like with somebody's name on it or something that is remind you of somebody that's because that's God trying to get your attention uh, in regards to doing something uh, or bringing something in the forefront that you try to hide in the background. Thank, thank you, Spirit. What I'm hearing Spirit say is something that you try to get away from. It's like it, it, it keeps being presented to you so that you, you know, see it consistently. It's almost like a nagging, should I say. <laughs> thank you, Spirit. Anyway, so let me finish. 
<laughs> Thank you, Spirit. And it says, follow the hunches. You are being given important guidance, which may show up via a strong feeling to travel somewhere, to speak to someone, attend a seminar, write, paint, etc. No matter how far fetched your inner guidance is, you need to listen. Your sole purpose includes a combination of experiences that your mind does doesn't understand, but your soul needs to process to learn and to grow. Some of these experiences will be enjoyable and heightened. Others will be challenging and cause you to struggle. But through them, you will know yourself. Give yourself permission to focus on what you really, what really makes your heart sing and put your intensity of emotions into attracting what you desire. And then it says actions that you can take. Actions you can take. It says ask questions such as divine intelligence. Help me to understand what is occurring in my life and how it is serving my spirit. What is the next step for me? What is my mission here? When you are asking these questions, you need to give yourself some time and space to receive an answer. I know I do that sometimes. I just write it down in a book and I just wait for an answer. And when I get an answer, I go back and I write the answer down until the next question. Then I write the next one down and do the same thing over. The answer may come from a book. And yes, I was just about to say that. For me, a couple of answers came through a situation of not just me hearing it, but it came through some information through something I was reading or something that I saw that kind of answered the question. So God speaks to us in mysterious ways. It's up to you to just kind of pay attention to those little, like I said, it said hunches, you know, little synchronicities and, you know, um, you know, things that God is just trying to get our attention. You know, whether it's just so happens somebody saying something on a topic or you run across a YouTube video or you something pops up on your timeline on YouTube or something pops up on your timeline on the internet or the news or whatever the case may be. You know, just have to pay attention to the hunches. Um, what is the next step for me? What is my mission here? When you are asking these questions, you need to give yourself some time and space to receive the answers. The answers may come from a book you read a person you encounter, I just said that, or your inner self. Keep a journal, and I just said that, right? <laughs> Keep a journal of your insights. And that's exactly what I do. So, and then we have this last card here, which is letting go. This situation has served its purpose. You are being challenged to change your point of view and recognize that this particular relationship has run its course, although you might be afraid to let it go. And let me be clear, y'all, because I know on one hand it's talking about love and letting love in. It's talking about these old relationships that you guys, some of you could be a co-worker, could be a boss, could be uh, particular family members or so-called frenemy or friend or take it how it resonates and I say frenemy because you know they're just hidden enemies or whatever <laughs> and they don't really have your highest sole purpose or whatever is hidden agendas but um I said it, it can be different for everybody it could be a situation of your neighbor it could be somebody you know at school or you know take it how it resonates but you know anyway Particular relationships has run its course, although you might be afraid to let go. The universe has new opportunities for you, which will allow you to ex experience the kind of passion and satisfaction that you have always dreamed of. Saying goodbye is never easy and can make you feel like you are a, can, excuse me, can make you feel like you're a failure. You must not allow yourself to be persuaded by other people or your own doubts to keep holding on. I know for me, when it was time for me to do a spring cleaning, I was like, okay, Lord, I'm trusting you. Even in like classic example, hold on y'all. <sighs> My bad. Anyway, so as a classic example, like um, like last year, I was being divinely guided. And I did the same, excuse me, did the same thing this year too. Like last year, I was being divinely guided to, you know, I, I think I, I received the, 
message when I told you guys some of you guys need to unsubscribe from certain people's channels or whatever the case may be. And I say all that to say that um, some of you being divinely guided to do it or whatever, whether it be unsubscribe from people's channels, you know, delete numbers or delete emails or delete people and letting them go, should I say? But I say all that to say uh, myself, I had to do a spring cleaning last year, right before, I think I did it in November last year. This month, I kind of went through my phone and I unsubscribed from people's, certain people's channels, should I say. You know, a lot of times I was just there to just, like the message, I saw that they was receiving the same messages that I was receiving or whatever, but, you know, and I would just do it as a way of, oh, okay, they're receiving the same message, but it's just coming in a different form, should I say. But it's a matter of me just being obedient because when I do that, when I did it the first time around, it's like I was releasing energy so that new energy can come in. When new energy came in, I got more new downloads, should I say. So everything happens for a reason. Um, saying goodbye is never easy and can make you feel like you're a failure. You must not allow yourself to be persuaded by other people or your own doubts to keep holding on. I'm sorry, I know I just read this. Focus on opening your heart to a new opportunity. Leave the baggage of the past mistakes behind you. Um, it is important that during the letting go process, you are gentle with yourself. Allow yourself to have alone time, write, meditate, paint, sing, dance. And I told you guys all of this, like, I think, two messages ago when I said I saw somebody getting creative with like some tissue paper um, getting in touch with your creative side do whatever you can to heal and let go of your pain that is holding you back recognize that your spirit is beckoning you to grow so those are your message but here's a quick action if you guys decide that you want to do it um, quick little exercise it says when you feel struck struck when you feel stuck in a point of view you ask yourself is this my belief or someone else's because i told you sometimes it depends on the person that you're around you can pick up on their energy especially if you guys are in past and nine times out of ten you know if you come in from a loving place and you always wanted to help 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 people because that was me at one point too to the point god was like uh -uh, what you doing pull back you know what i mean because these people just like they don't appreciate what you're doing and it just taking advantage of it. So I had to choose me and pull back my energy. And then it's almost like, as I said, when I pull back my energy, people are like, oh my God, like, what do I do? What do I do? They were meant to survive. Just like how I had to survive in a sense. But anyway, it says, is this my belief or someone else's? How does it serve me? Am I willing to let go of my fears and unfound limitations? Says divine healing intelligent. Please assist me to let go of this situation. Then it has like a little line. You can put whatever the situation is. State what it is. Habits. State it is. A line. Person. Say their name. Line. With ease and grace. Inspire me to move forward with freedom and lightness. Freedom and lightness and feeling of com completion bringing into my reality new and empower experiencing people and opportunities thank you repeat the words and clear clear several times so you can just recite that do that little exercise if you so choose to and do it several times just to get in that mindset because it's something about when you speak to yourself i know for me i get up every morning and I have to speak to myself and remind myself that, you know, absolutely no one has power, no authority, no control over me. And um, and remind myself of that, you know, and just not just that, but other things as well, too, so that I remember to just stand in my power as well, too. Because I know sometimes when we around other people, that's why it's so important to be around to be around the right people because when you're around the people who it, the individuals that god is asking you to release when you're around those certain type of energies you know whether it's i don't know i, I just want to say conniving because i feel like she's just kind of standing like she's up to no good but then the people in the background are the ones that she's letting go of but anyway i don't even know why conniving came in the picture so that's a message for somebody but um 
you know, when people are coming from a place of being conniving, slick, or, you know, not having integrity, and we're hanging around those people, well, being an empath, you can kind of pick up on that energy. And that's why it's so important to know yourself, know what you're capable of, because if you're around other people that's doing that, you're like, wait, that's not my energy. That must be their energy, you know? So it's not about blaming other people, but that's why it's important to understand who you are and how you operate, because that way you know what's yours and what's other people's. Anyway, so I hope that was helpful. And again, it's communication, authority, divine masculine, letting go, discovering your life purpose and love that is here. I feel like spirit is having me pull one more card. I'm sorry, y'all. Hold on. And this particular deck is just bringing it to my attention. longest video I ever did and I wasn't even trying to do this this long funny because spirit was like telling me to turn over that card i hear amalams in the background i don't know if y'all can hear but the, the card says practice 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 so practice you know your communication as if you're talking to that person or what you want to say like it said earlier okay hey it's at the bottom of the deck deck paid off and thank you spirit and what i'm hearing is some of you can have your debt paid off just by making a conscious effort is what i'm hearing spirit say because spirit can show up in any type of way so the old weight and the habits of debt is lifted from you in your life so in other words when you let go of the old you know again it could be a situation of your debt you know some bills that you're paying somehow god can send you a blessing to pay that bill off which you just making one simple step, God can bless you in so many different ways. You never know how he would show up. I told you guys before in a message how God told me to tell this one parent of mine when we actually had our own daycare center, she was being nasty towards me. I didn't know why, but, you know, for the whole time, probably like from me being, I want to say almost like maybe four months, maybe. I don't know why I'm hearing four months, probably four months, three months or whatever. She was being nasty towards me or whatever. And it wasn't until after I had my, uh, daughter that she eventually said something to me about my daughter and talking about how beautiful she was but the whole time she gave me a hard time uh not the whole time but majority of the hard time she had well the last <coughs> excuse me the last three or four months of my pregnancy she kind of gave me a hard time <coughs> sorry went down the wrong way and then um one day she just came out and said your daughter's beautiful and you know by then my my daughter was probably about four months old, which is so funny, four and four. <laughs> anyway, so I say all that to say that God had placed upon my heart to tell me, told me to tell her that he's going to bless her, you know, and I didn't know where that was coming from. At that point in time, I was like, it kept coming up. Go tell her I'm going to bless her. So I went and called her and told her, and she was like, well, thank you for telling me that. And then a week later, she ended up with a new car. So you never know how God may show up. But anyway, it says debt paid off. So whether it be the debt of 
you served your karma with these old people that you've been divinely guided to walk away from and to let go of. But not only that, but you have this walk away card here. And it says, walk away, leave the unhealthy situations and enjoy the new doors that opens as a result. And I didn't even see there was another card behind this one, but it says that one, this one was on top of this one. It says, you've got the power. So you got it. Use your abilities to resolve this situation. You can do it. As hard as it may seem, you can do it. Because when you get rid of one thing, God will replace it with something new. Trust me when I tell you. And then we have the patience please card. And it says, what you're asking, what you're asking for is coming about. Have patience as there are unseen factors that need to be that needs to be occurred first. So have patience. So in other words, when you release these people, let them go. I've read these cards the opposite way, y'all. So this this one should have, should have read that one first. But anyway, so when you release those people, um, if you choose to, if you release those people, just know that it's considered karma paying off. Everything's gonna go uphill from there. And God has spoken, said, you got the power. Anyway, so this last one says, patient, excuse me, practice, practice, practice. So with daily practice, you can polish your skills and talent and increase your confidence. So whatever it is that you may be, whatever it is that you, whatever it is that you may need the confidence in, whether it needs, as it has spoken, if you sit there and act like you're having a conversation with whoever it is that you need to have a conversation with, like, and releasing how you think the situation may go but not only that deliver the message in a form of delivering it and then put yourself in the other person's shoes when delivering it and ask yourself what i'm hearing spirit say and ask yourself if you would want somebody to deliver a message to you a certain way so it's not about you it's about you speaking your truth but deliver it in a way that you would want it to be delivered to you not sugarcoating it not uh not not trying to hide it and not be authentic, but just how you want it to deal. Remember, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Thank you, Spirit, is what I'm trying to say. So deliver it in a way of how you would want it to be said to you. But it's being truthful and it's being authentic and it's being honest and it's having integrity. Okay? So anyway, with all that being said, I wish y'all much love, much light. I do apologize again for getting you guys these messages late, but I hope you guys listen to the end and only just took what resonates with you. And uh, just remember that these do not have to be the outcome. We always have uh, we always have choices, should I say? So you know, you could either choose to let go or you could choose to hold on, and the choices totally up to each individual person but you know as i said before i always try to shuffle the cards on the scene so that way that you know you guys can see that it's not me pulling these cards ahead of time that spirit is spoken and it's reconfirming everything that i've already said so i wish you all much love much light into the next prophetic message i say stay blessed and remember to always keep god first and foremost and just know that change is coming if you so choose it. I know I choose to be liberated. <laughs> you know, I, I, I choose to be liberated for just everything that I've had to deal with this year, the years before that, everything. I'm choosing a new path. I can't speak for y'all, but I'm choosing one. Hey, I'm going to go out and do a cartwheel and I may record me doing it, <laughs> should I say. But anyway, I wish you all much love and much light until the next prophetic message. I say peace and bless blessings and uh, remember like i said before to always keep god first and foremost in your heart mind your body soul and spirit anyway bye